Hi everybody, short run costs. Well, remember what the short run is for a business. It is a period of time when there is at least one fixed factor of production. We don't define it in terms of six months or one year. We don't define it in terms of actual time. We define it in terms of the variability of our factors of production. So when there is at least one fixed factor of production, a business is in the short run. Usually there are two fixed factors of production in the short run, land and capital. Whereas in the long run, all factors of production are variable. That's a crucial start. But also costs are quite unique in economics. There are two different groups of costs. We have our explicit costs, costs that require actual payment, and we have our implicit costs. Implicit cost for a business is just their opportunity cost. And that's always the profit they could have made doing their next best alternative. That is a cost. It doesn't require physical payment, therefore it's implicit, but it is a cost. And then we have our two explicit costs, our fixed costs and our variable costs. Fixed costs are costs that do not vary with output. So even if nothing is being produced, a business has to pay fixed costs. Whereas variable costs are costs that do vary with output. You pay more of these as you produce more. So let's take some examples of fixed costs. Costs you have to pay regardless of how much output you're producing. Things like rent, salaries. Salaries are contractual, right? So you have to pay those regardless of how much you're producing, usually a yearly contract there. So salaries are fixed. Interest on loans, advertising, business rates. This is taxes and having a physical premises as a business here, business rates. These are all costs you have to pay regardless of how much output you're producing. Whereas variable costs, if you look at these, you have to pay more of these the more you're producing. Wages are more flexible than salaries are. Wages can change more quickly. So wages are a variable cost. Utility bills, so your gas, electricity bills, your water bills, internet bills, they're all a variable. Your raw material costs, your transport costs, all will increase the more that you produce. So these are variable, whereas these are some good examples of fixed costs. What we want to do now is to map what our cost curves look like in the short run. And in this video, we're going to look at total fixed cost, average fixed cost, and average variable cost. Total fixed cost and average fixed cost are very, very easy to draw because their shapes have got nothing to do with the law of diminishing returns. It's the only two cost curves in the short run that have got nothing to do with the law of diminishing returns. So they are very easy to draw. Let's start by looking at total fixed costs. We've just said that fixed costs are costs that do not vary with output. So total fixed cost is just going to be constant. It's going to be at a constant figure over a given range of output. So total fixed cost is just going to look like that really simple. I've put some equations at the top of how you can work out total fixed cost. Average fixed cost, well if we take this equation to use and calculate average fixed cost, TFC over Q, well we know that TFC is a fixed number, it's a constant number, and if Q is rising, the output is increasing increasing, you're dividing a constant number by an ever increasing number, and that means your average fixed cost is going to fall, fall, fall the more that we produce. So average fixed cost is going to look something like that downward sloping, looking like that, using this equation, that makes a lot of sense. So these two curves are very simple to remember. Make sure we learn the equations as well. They are shaped not because of the law of diminishing returns at all, so therefore very simple to get your head around. The average variable cost curve, though, is shaped due to the law of diminishing returns. We're going to look at that now. The average variable cost curve looks like this, looks like a nice smiley face. To calculate it, we could do total variable cost divided by quantity or we can do average cost minus average fixed cost. But why does it look like this smiley face? Well, due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. Let's understand how by using a very simple numerical example. Let's assume that there is a business and for this business operating in the short run, wages are the only variable cost. And we'll also assume that workers are paid a daily wage rate of £100. Let's say one worker is hired, that means total variable cost is £100, and let's say that worker produces 10 units. Well, average variable cost is therefore 100 divided by 10, that's going to be £10. Let's now say two workers are hired, total variable cost is £200, together they produce 30 units, 200 divided by 30 is £6.67 to 2DP. Let's now say three workers are hired, total variable cost is going to be £300, they together produce 70 units, and therefore AVC is 300 divided by 70. That's going to give us £4.28 to 2DP. 
So what we can see here is up to three workers, can we see that there are increasing returns to labor? Labor productivity is rising, marginal product is rising, and that is reducing average variable cost. Marginal product is 10 here, then 20, and then 40. Increasing marginal product, increasing labor productivity will reduce average variable cost. But look, the law of diminishing returns, diminishing returns kicks in when we hire this fourth worker. So four workers are hired, total variable cost is now 400 pounds, and these workers together produce 80 units. That means that average variable cost is 400 divided by 80, that's five pounds, let's keep going. Five workers are hired, TVC is 500, and they produce 85 units, 500 divided by 85 is five pounds and 88 to two decimal places. And let's just go all the way down to 10 workers uh, are hired, that means total variable cost of 1,000 pounds, they produce 100 units, let's say, that's average variable cost of 10 pounds. So we can see that when we hire this fourth worker, diminishing returns kick in. Marginal product is falling from 40 there to 10 to five, right? It's decreasing. When labor productivity is falling and marginal product is falling, average variable cost will be rising, okay? So we can see that average variable cost will fall, but when the law of diminishing returns kicks in, it will start to rise. And that explains the shape here. In fact, we can put these numbers to our diagram. You don't need to do this or make things unnecessarily messy, but let's do it together. So for the first 10 units, for the first 10 units, let's say we're over here. So that's 10 units there. We have AVC of 10 pounds, but then we have 30 units coming next. So let's say 30 units gives us an average variable cost of 6.67, so that fits nicely there. And then to get to 70 units, we hit our minimum. So 70 is there, and we get to four pounds 28. So we can see higher labor productivity, we can see a higher marginal product and a reduction in average variable cost, then diminishing returns kicks in. So to get to 80 units here, to get to 80, let's say it's over here somewhere, we get to an average variable cost of five. To get to 85, which is only just over there, let's say 85, we get to five pounds 88, et cetera. And then when we get to 100, when we get to 100, which is over here, we get back to our average variable cost of 10. So the numbers very much fit the diagram, lovely. So that explains the shape of the AVC curve, very much due to the law of diminishing returns, whereas our fixed cost curves, TFC and AFC, had nothing to do with the law of diminishing returns. In fact, they are the only two curves that we learn, only two short-run cost curves that have got nothing to do with the law of diminishing returns. All the others are because of this law. So three curves there. We are not gonna to touch total variable cost. I do that in a video later in this playlist. Check that out if you want. But we now need to continue and look at marginal cost and average cost. That's coming next. Make sure you stay tuned for that very important video. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.